I'm stronger than I've ever been in the name of Jesus. Satan be trying to attack our weak points. He tries to capitalize on them. He knows what flavor of sin to put on his hook and lure you in. But there is a trigger that we do that causes us to fall. Whether it's in pornography, whatever it is, the devil knows your weakness. But your greatest weakness as you serve God will become your greatest strength. And see, God, I didn't realize, but every time I fell into this temptation and remained faithful and continue to persevere in Jesus Christ, God will reward me. He will never, ever reward you for sin. Sin will never be okay. But when you got devils all over you, when you try and, and all your heart and all your soul and all your mind to serve God, to do his will, to fulfill his purposes, to read his word, and you're really in a genuine heart through the Holy Ghost, you're trying to do right and everything. And the devil just keeps smothering you, slicing you up, and you in the middle of darkness. It feels like God then abandoned you. You got Satan and the kingdom of hell all around you. And it feels you have every reason in your logical human mind to give up. Every reason in the physical realm that makes sense why you should should give up but you lift your hand out of that darkness and you grab a hold to the horns of the altar and you grab on the feet of Jesus Christ in that eternal when you grab in that eternity God rewards you and you may not see it at first but in that eternity God shines on you in that eternity God reigns himself in his glory and his presence which causes new levels of strength power abundance in the spirituality not in the physical not through money not through physical materials like walls like wood through paper I'm talking about through sacrifice through humility through suffering this transforms into glorification the glo the suffering is your glorification the more you suffer, the more you will be glorified. The more you stay in the death to self, it seems as if it becomes harder to die to yourself or why you don't want to worship, why you don't want to praise, because your flesh will never want to do that. So when it's more intense, that means more greater levels and more unfoldments of God and his power and his resurrection and his glory and his orbs inside of you are going to unfold. That's what's happening. And you begin to like right now, I begin to feel it stronger than I've ever felt. I see the increase and I see the levels of knowledge that I've gained. I see the levels of battles I went through. I see the scars, but I see them all coming together and mending and becoming one like a ribbon for before God. And it is a, it is a true level of worship. Going to church every week saying hallelujah, thank you Jesus, that's not worship. It's a lifestyle. It's remaining death to yourself. And when we words and this knowledge is powerful. You feel the anointing, we feel the gifts, we feel the presence, but it's the own experience with God that you can't speak through human words, that even the anointing, it changes your life, but I can't, the only way for me to get in my own experience is to express. Through expression, a person is able, and the experiences we have on inside that people don't see on the outside or what makes serving God so amazing. It's not just the church. It's not just speaking in tongues. It's not just having power to cast demons out. And let me tell you something. Any kind of disease can be set free. Disease is a sickness and it is not of God and Jesus shed his blood. We have the cure to all cancer, AIDS, diabetes, sickness, but you have to command that thing to leave and you have to learn the spirit and the ministry of deliverance. You have to get to a deliverance ministry of truth. We live in a time now, the reason why people don't want to serve God, I feel the Holy Ghost. The reason why people don't want to serve Jesus because we have a lot of, because first of all, Satan, the prince of this world, he attacks everybody, but he's after one force. His main target is one group of people. That's the people that truly serve Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's who gets attacked the most. You ever wondered, for anybody that can relate with me, before I served God, Satan never messed with me. I believed in Jesus. I went to church every Sunday, but I lived like the devil every single week. The devil didn't mess with me. I didn't have all these World War Threes in my mind, every kind of spirit trying to rip me apart, getting kicked out on the street, blood dripping all off my body, just agony. I never had that. I could do what I want. I could do it at my pleasure. I could smoke my weed. I could have my sex. I could play my games. The devil never messed with me. But the moment, and this was years ago, that I said yes to serve God, all this hell and all this fire. But see, we say, what's the point of serving God? When all this hell and Satan comes after you, every time something tremendously chaotic in the spirit happens to you, that's when you grow in your truth and you begin to get, grab a hold on this world and the systems and you begin to conquer. And now you understand the one who has already overcome the world in you begins to make sense. And every time the dark, see, God is always a rewarder at all times. So every time Satan comes against you, you get rewarded for remaining faithful to God and continuing to serve. 
serve God. So when the devil comes against you with darkness, all he is doing is exposing his tactics, his way, his emotions, and his weapons towards you. And what you revolts in Christ, you begin to understand how powerful God is, who your identity in Christ is. And all God is doing through your whole entire life when you serve him is revealing. In spirituality, we talk about awakening in the mind and the soul, the gates of the spirit, the gates of the mind, harmony, frequency, certain codes of the universe, codes of the DNA. And that's all real good stuff and spiritual. But in Christ, you have the eternal God, omnipotent, omniscient, infinite knowledge, all knowledge, all sources, all wisdom, all revelation. So when you die to your flesh, that lives in you because God is not just looking for somebody to go and work for him. God is looking for somebody to submit and yield to him so he can do his will through you. You're not doing your, the will of God on your own. He's doing his will through you. All God is ever looking for is a vessel. All Satan is ever looking for is a vessel. Satan has to have a vessel to do his work on this earth earth he does not he dominion on this earth human beings have been given dominion on this earth so when governmental systems when leaders make a contract or a covenant with satan they hand over their dominion and they give satan power no matter what satan will never have authority he has power, but even authority, we in Christ have authority. Demons must obey us. We don't have to do obey demons, but when we make contracts and legal rights, Satan's influence increases over lands and regions, and the more people sacrifice to him, he gains more access. It's not the devil worshipers that give the Satan his power. It's we, the Christians, who carry the power of God, who submit to the devil, who freak out and who deny Christ and disobey the Holy Ghost and work with Satan. We are the one that feeds him more power. The only time Satan gets more power, he already has all the evil power. When people do witchcraft, when they do voodoos, when you have all kinds, you ever wonder why women are becoming more and more sexy? You ever thought she was crazy? No, it's because when you dedicate something to a demon, even if it's a physical item, that thing will have power. You ever wonder why physical items, they had some kind of aura or energy or power in it? Because so when they have satanic priests and fetishes, they put demonic prayers on the lipstick, they put demonic prayers in the porn, and it goes into the electronics, and it goes into the technology systems, and it has dark power in it. I got Jesus in me, boy. The devil can never defeat me. I've been sealed by God. I love Jesus. I'm committed to Jesus. I'm not doing this for fame. You don't do this to put a name for yourself. See, the ones that truly shine on the highest plateau, the highest platform that will be given the most revenue, the most increase are the ones who stayed nothing to God. And what I mean by that, they stayed instead of trying to be famous for Christ, instead of trying to use Jesus as a name for the ministry and the gifts that he gave them, instead of just using the gifts to make money, when the people that stayed at the bottom of the food chain, the people that stayed in the back of the church on their face, just worshiping Jesus, just getting to know God day in, day out, not trying to be famous, not trying to be successful according to the world standard, not trying to go out there before their time. That's going to be the ones that God promotes and elevates and shoots into the stratospheres of the heaven and the spirit realm. And the people are going to be like, where do these brothers come from? Those were the ones that were staying in humility. They were staying unseen from the world, like it says, according to the word of God. To stay abstain from the world. You know what I'm saying? They were the ones in sacrifice, the ones in humility. Okay, gotcha, I agree. Apostle Debris. That brings me to my point that I just saw that message. There are certain people that are very special to your walk with God. Let me give you a personal example. There's one person at my church I go to. When this brother sits next to me, the energy of the spirit the magnitude of the holiness of God. And I don't know, even know if he realizes it, even though I told him. I said, brother, you, we, we got to hang out. The energy that I feel, the empowerment that I feel, just when this brother sits next to me and we worship Jesus, is more than anybody else that I've yet to spend time with in that church. There's a mentorship program that I'm in. I'm going to start putting the links at the bottom of my videos. If you want to know the end times of Jesus, the greater works of Jesus, you got to come check this out. If you want to see cancer die, if you want to see miracles, it's going to come. But it's only if you want a relationship with Jesus Christ and you're truly committed. He said, the, the, the brother teaches us, he said, it's an offense and it's illegal in the spirit to even do deliverance, even to cast demons out if we don't teach relationship. And if that person doesn't even, is not willing to receive Jesus, that spirit, that demon, that sickness will only come back 10 times worse. You must have received Jesus Christ or be willing to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior because that is the freedom that remains in you. That is the purity that remains in you. If there's one person in that mentor 
that when we talk on the phone, my God, heaven opens up. My God, the glory of God falls. My God, everything is realized in that moment. And, it, and every time I go through, see now I, I live a lifestyle of worship. Every time the devil tries, I've learned how to wield and use the helmet of salvation. And now I'm learning how to work. God lives inside my house. There was a deep, there's deeper levels in your spirit. When we stop being so outwardly and trying to find God externally and trying to live God externally and begin to tap into the economy system of heaven, the kingdom of heaven inside of us and go to different layers, you will begin to serve God, experience God, worship God, receive the revelation in the deeper levels of your spirit. And you will receive greater treasures and the unfolding in the secrets of God and the infinite and eternity. And it begins to get to a level. Religion hinders, quenches, blinds us from this. You begin to get to a certain level where... You embody this power. At first you embody, first you feel it. It's scary. It's intense. But then you learn how to wield this power by learning to control it. When you learn how to wield the power as a weapon that God gives you, then it's like the knowledge and the crowns of knowledge are placed upon your head. Then you learn how to reign in this power that you've learned how to wield. Then God will see that. Then he will give you a kingdom to reign. You know what I'm saying? Everything is a kingdom. Everything is a constellation of God. Everything is a part and a piece and a particle of God. And when you simplify the simplicity, even in science, they'll teach you. They're always trying to find something they call the God particle, the boson, Hicks boson layer that they're all doing. And they always seem to find smaller particles that carry more power. The entire universe, it's not just this big 5,000 levels and miles. It all came from a seed. All growth and life and creation came from a seed. But who put that seed in there? And then when you tap even deeper than that, before the seed of all creation, all life, all birth, all power, all knowledge and fruit, and you go before that to the one who has always been there through the Holy Spirit. See, very few Christians realize how blessed we are to have received. How, how we think worship is, is all we have to worship. If you knew, if you carried the revelation, if you had understanding and insight, any piece of this, you would worship God. You would be ready to worship God. You'd be ready to pray. You'd be ready to give God glory. You'd be ready to fall on your knees. You'd be ready to give up your flesh. If you knew God has given you everything that he was, that he is. Jesus Christ gave you his best when he died on the cross. All right, I really want to help somebody out. I ain't up here just preaching, looking cool, sounding good, but let me just go off. Holy Spirit, take it. Looks, the angles of the camera, the way you present things is important. When it looks good, when the angles are right, when the presentation is right, whether it's on your YouTube video, face page, put emphasis, emphasis and energy into what you do. Looking is very important. It will actually enhance the power and the creativity and the energy and the influence of God. And God will put a magnet on that and what will cause people to come to you. God puts, see, the whole world, God put in the humanity of soul, whether we realize it or not, a hunger for truth. A hunger for life. You, your life can't even be fulfilled no matter how rich you are, no matter if you have love. That's why men and women were always seeking sex, relationship after relationship. Okay? So, but when you possess that through Christ, the true knowledge, God will put a magnet and the whole earth will be attracted to you. The world will come to you. When you carry the true love of God, God will put a magnet on that area, on that realm, and the whole world of that will come to you. Okay? He will put a magnet in the world. The nations will automatically come to you. When you serve God, he... All right, but I just want to give you some key. I want to help somebody out, Jesus. I want it because you done helped me out. You done blessed me. You done gave me power. You done gave me knowledge. And I got to give it my heart. There's certain people I'm subscribed to. And when they come and when they teach, they just have so much energy and so much passion. And I study the mindsets. One guy was saying, you don't want their money, the people, or even their anointing. You just want their mindset and how they process. So I take even these millionaires, these great men of God, the greatest people, of the, the most influential people that live, lived on earth. I study and I, I'm able to study all this for free off YouTube, the internet. And I copy and paste their mindset and their ways, how they made money, how they got to God, how they had successful, how they have encounters, how they get in the presence of God, all this. And I just copy and paste it into my processor. And the more I exercise it and go over it, that it's written down, it becomes one. And it's just in my processor. So I'm processing all these revelations and these brilliant mindsets of God at one time. First, see, first it can be very difficult and it can be very confusing. But as you exercise it, as you increase, but let me give you some keys. You must sow if you're going to reap. You have to sow financially. Serving. 
Number two, serving. You must serve in a ministry. You must serve somewhere. Three, working is a gift. The harder you work at your job, whether it's make, this is a key right here, and this is a key with a revelation that God has shown me. We always want increase. I'm at my job. I work fast food. It don't matter where you work. If you want increase, you pray for increase. You pray for influence. You pray you want something bigger. But the Lord revealed to me and showed me, if you can't get it right where you're at now, you will never increase. Most people will go around the same mountain over and over at a low-end paying job, low income spiritually, low income in their knowledge, because they will not learn to get it right in the present moment that they're at. You must learn to get it right, master, be filled, and right. How do you do that? At my job, I'm learning to... Cultivate humility. I'm, I've unlocked the gift of intercession God has put in me. And instead of thinking about people, I now pray for them. And because I don't no longer think, which leads to anger and irritation towards them, because I pray for them, now I have a deeper love and now there's deeper breakthroughs on their life. And their treasure, because of my intercession towards them, is unlocking and coming... It's coming to me. I'm, I've learned at my job how to take over the atmosphere. I walk into my job. I release the kingdom of heaven's atmosphere. I don't pray. I don't beg. I say I take authority. I use my authority and I release the kingdom of heaven into this atmosphere. The moment I do that, it takes five seconds. The angels are released. The atmosphere is controlled and God is moving in that place. And then they put me on the thrive through. I came out of my comfort zone at my job and I began to learn different realms. I'm a very spiritual person. Even when I'm working on the grill, I learn how to go through the fire and pray. And as I'm doing that, even when people are rude to me or rushing me and stuff, I use that as a filter. They're just critiquing me so I don't get angry and upset. They're critiquing me and making my sword sharper. So my focus intensifies, my prayer intensifies, and everybody in the process gets blessed by it, by one man. And when you know this, it's powerful. So, okay, whatever, key, whatever. You got to get it right where you're at now. Right now, I don't care who you are. If you have access to the internet, you have access to all knowledge. If you have the Holy Spirit, you have access to the entire universe. You can travel wherever you want in heaven. You can go wherever you want in your God. Another one, and this is the biggest one. This is probably the biggest one. I will probably preach against this spirit more than any other spirit of Satan. I will probably break this demonic power, principality, sword, weapon, as long as I'm on earth. Religion. Religion is a spirit and a demon. Ask God every day, take the spirit of religion out of me. Break the religious mindset from me. God is not a religion. He is a spirit. You must break religion. Don't ever be religious. You say, well, how do I do all these things? Simply. You simply, in the simplicity of the simpleness, you ask the Holy Spirit. I did not get all this by being smart, by being educated, because I came from a royal bloodline, because I went to school, because I'm just some special. No, because I simply trust God. I receive Jesus Christ, and I ask the Holy Spirit. And every time I asked the Holy Spirit for something, he automatically gave it to me. But for me to see it manifest took time in the physical realm. You have to understand, anytime you pray according to the will of God, God gives it to you. He's not a liar in his word. People call God a liar. Well, I prayed for this. I didn't get it. You already got it in the spirit. If it's according to God's will, you already got it. But seeing it manifest in time is the thing. And there's ways to increase manifestation. And there's many things that we do that hinder manifestation. You already got what you prayed for. But for it to manifest, whether it's money, and you need to understand God wants you to have money. God, you don't think God wants you to travel the world. You really think God wants you to be poor, broke, and poverty. You really think that's God? No, it's not. Satan wants you to think that. You really think it's God's will for you to have cancer? Well, maybe it's the will of God for me to have cancer. No, it's not. I understand certain things happen even in according to the word of God. Somebody had was blind, and he said it was for the will of God. But you need to understand, and for the glory of God, it's not God's will for you to be sick. Okay, but when you accept poverty, when you accept sickness, you will be sick and you have given Satan legal rights. Many Christians, the reason why they die, the reason why they get diabetes is because they accept it. If you accept what the doctor told you, then you have just given Satan legal rights to live there. You reject poverty. You reject sickness. You reject death. I don't care how many times you fall. You reject failure every single day. You know, all right, let me testify. I love to, there's two things you need to understand. Thank you, Father, for this knowledge. I can feel God so strong. But, but if you really want to go deep with God and bring the depths of God, you must learn to express and just testify of his greatness and just express his goodness. Knowledge is empowerment, but through music, through singing, through worship, you're able to express the deepest things of God. And the more you express openly, Publicly, the more open and publicly you will see God. Okay? And it's just, I love God. I don't need a piece of paper. 
I have many books of throne room knowledge, experiential knowledge, vitamins from heaven, calculations from heaven, how to get from the universe here. I have all that, but it's about becoming a babe and a child. Let me give you another key to how to get in God's presence and how to get God's attention. Rebuke your knowledge. Every day, rebuke yourself. Rebuke. Don't try to go to God like a, with a PhD. Don't ever go to God's throne with your PhD, with your business suit, with your, with your accolades, with your stripes, with all your success. Don't ever go to God with a resume, please. God's not mad at you. This is knowledge. Take the knowledge and use it. Don't ever take the knowledge and be afraid. Oh, no, I did it. Blah, 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 blah. No, just take it and use it. Don't ever go to God with a resume. Every time you go to God, go to him naked. Rebuke your knowledge. Rebuke your smarts. Rebuke your old wonderful education. Rebuke all your wonderful gifts. Become nothing before God. Like the dust we are. Then you will become everything that God is. God deals with me through speed and violence. I can't, I can't speak this enough. The more I pray this and teach this, the more passion I have for this. And the deeper the passion, the deeper the spiritual acceleration, which is the passion, it flows through the mind. And it begins to open up the windows in circulation. There was a circulation of God. There was a, there was a rotation of God. Everything God does, when you tap into the hidden part, like let's say we know in the Bible, seraphim surround God's throne. But if you ever thought of the wind in between the seraphims, the invisibility between the seraphims, what that holds? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. It'll make you. There's three postures on how you know God is talking to you or you receive a bomb of revelation. Uh, there's deeper revelations. And when you receive a deep one that will transform you forever, usually when, when God deals with me, something or like he releases a weight on me, like a weight of revelation or a weight of breakthrough or a weight, not just one revelation, but a weight of them. I'll do this like I'll, 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 I'll grab my head and I'll almost fall. That's how I know God. That's one posture. Where I know God just released a weight of glory on me. Another one is, I don't know, I've been feeling different ones lately. I don't even know. Because I'm always experiencing God on a different level. God wants you to always experience him on a different level. I really want to help people. I'm not up here trying to be famous. I'm not up here. God has given me knowledge. He's given me wisdom. And I have to help people. There is a world. If I'm sitting here with all this joy, all this glory, all this knowledge, I got financial. God is... God already told me I was going to be a million. I got prosperity just flowing into me. I already know that. I know I have opportunities just hunting me down. But there is a world that is dying. There is a world that is clueless to this. There is a world that has been blinded by Satan. And they have all they have. All they got to do is receive. And they can have health, freedom, abundance, prosperity, life, their vision, completeness, protection. But they don't have it because they're out of the will of God. So I have to fight for the world. I have to help people. We, as the body of Christ, God's not going to hold devil worship. He's not even going to hold them accountable. He's just going to judge them. But we as Christians, we as the body, he's going to hold us accountable. Everybody's going to be judged. And God is going to judge every man accordingly. But we are going to be held to the highest standard when we stand before God. And just in case I never told you, let me explain to you why God those people in hell. You got all these religions and stuff. Well, God's a good God. He is a good God. But that don't mean he won't cast you into hell for all eternity. Let me explain to you why God, those people. And see, when you receive this knowledge and you release it to people, the entire kingdom of heaven rejoices. God begins to overflow with passion because you are speaking the truth. He says, God, God says, I, my innermost being will rejoice when you speak the truth, when you teach people about me. And we say, why doesn't God just show up and tell us? He does. But we as human beings have dominion and it's in our authority to release it. You got to think of this. Even though God is all powerful, he is looking for a vessel that will submit to him and be used. God has to have a vessel to do his work. And you have to honor. You got to. Oh. I'm about to go to heaven, boy. You get to a point in Christ, you're like, why am I still here? 
Because you got You get to a point of Christ where everything you could ever desire, it's already been accomplished in the spirit. You come to a revelation where all the gifts, all the power, everything inside, all the experience, all the knowledge, all the connection, all the success, all the books that could ever be written, all the codes that could ever be unlocked, all the information that could ever be displayed, all the secrets that could open up all the kingdom is already inside you. It's already been given to you as you awaken. As you awaken to this, you say, what's left? As if you reach the pinnacle, you say, what's left? To worship God. See, it, see, it, see, it seems boring, like we're just going to worship God all day in heaven. But when you come to the realization, and see, we, oh my gosh, I love Jesus. You want to know why I love Jesus? Because I be feeling him. I, I get filled with him. He, he just fills me with power. And I exercise in spiritual... We, we rolling, we rolling, three, two, one. All right, we recording, we recording, all right. <sighs> Man, forget all that stuff, forget all this. Lord, Jesus, I just come to you right now and I give you glory, Jesus Christ. Thank you for delivering me from pornography. Thank you for delivering me from pornography. All the hours and times that I fell into traps and temptation, just sitting there sinning against you. Thank you for all the times I have sinned against you, God. Willfully sinned. I'm not bringing up the past. I'm just saying all the times I've willfully sinned against you, you have still forgiven me and you have still healed me and you have still given me more power. You have caused every area of my life to increase. And I just praise you for that, Father. Your Holy Spirit, you have kept me in the faith. When everybody else could have fallen off, when I wanted to fall, when I wanted to give up, when Satan was just ripping my soul apart when I could just couldn't go, when I didn't want to go to church, when I didn't want to pray. Just, the Holy Spirit just grabbed me, just picked me up, and God just blessed. He wasn't even pissed off at me. He wasn't even mad at me. He wasn't even like, man, how many times am I going to deal with you? I'm going to choose somebody else. I just can't deal. No, he pursued me with infinite love. He never stopped pursuing me. I've lived evil on this earth. And God, there ain't nothing special. There ain't, I am the righteousness of God and holy in Christ Jesus. That's it. But I just thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to preach to your people. And I thank you because this level right here, it's impossible for me to lose. It's impossible for me to go back. I've tasted, I've tasted too much of your glory. I've gone too deep and far into God himself. I can't come out. And I just thank you for this level, God. I thank you that you, you don't trap people, but you, you, once they get to a certain level, you can capture them like a Pokemon ball. You just capture that thing, you can, and you've captured me, Lord. You consume me with your fire. You consume me with your passion. You consume me with your glory. And I love you, Jesus. And I thank you for the glory that's on my life. I thank you for the power that's on my life. But most above everything, and I pray this every day to God, y'all. Above the power, above the anointing, I just want to love you, Jesus. I, just, I don't just want to move mountains. I don't just want to move faith. If I had all signs, wonder, miracle, power, if I knew all angelic tongues, if I had all faith, if I had all revelation, if I had all keys, but I had not love, it means nothing. Have faith and hope with the greatest of these things of love. All of the law is summed up in two things. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's the fulfillment of everything. <sighs> God has been so good to me. I can't help but worship him. It's, it's not good on a physical wise. Well, God gave me money. Forget the freaking physical realm for once, okay? Forget the, the money realm. And I know it's hard to do. God's not pissed off at us. He's not, oh, these people are stupid. They're dumb. No, he knows, okay? We live in a physical realm. And it's like, well, how am I supposed to? He knows. He's not mad, okay? But for once, forget the physical. Sometimes you got to just shut your mouth, shut your eyes, and tap into the Holy Ghost and meditate. Use your imagination. Use your creation power. Use the energy in your creation power. And this is another thing that Satan has stripped from the body of Christ, violence. The devil hates violent faith, so he makes it thinks that we're being crazy or chaotic in Christ because he knows violent faith is a potency in spiritual. And when I mean potency, it is a weapon of devastation. There's certain weapons that weaken the devil, you can scar a demon, you can make a demon run, but there's certain weapons in the body of Christ that make the entire kingdom of hell melt and it causes excruciating agony to them. And they say, we ain't going to war with him just like no punks. We, we, he ain't no punk, he's discovered, he's tapped into the power that God has given him. We ain't finna just mess with him. We have yet, as people in Christ, we have yet because of our religion, our religious ways, the lies of Satan tapped in. Remember when I remember this word very clearly, tapped in, not looked on the outside, tapped in, not found it through money, not found it in the physical realm. We have yet to tap in to the truest potential and power Jesus Christ gave us when he died on the cross with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Oh my 
God, God is so amazing. If anybody, and I'm going to say this for the rest of my life, this ain't about being new. It's every day it's about preaching the cross, the revelation of God, speaking the word of God. If you pray and you read God's word and you worship him, you will receive his glory. It's that simple. When you find the simplicity of Christ, you will find the greatest and most complex and highest heights of God. Not when you search for the highest heights. It's found in simplicity. I keep doing that because I'm getting shot with revelation. As I preach and as I release God, God shoots like he shoots revelation into me. And the more he, the more you're able to handle, the more he gives to you. The more, the more weight you're able to handle, the more he gives you. The more glory you're able to handle, the more he... Anybody that's watching, I just pray this touch your life. I release the angels of God to you. Everything that the Holy Spirit has given me, I purify myself. I cleanse my side, myself. I will not impart anything evil to anybody. Everything I purify, everything of Christ, and everything that I have to offer through anybody has watched this, who anybody has been touched by this, I, everything of you, I cause it and command it to activate. I release everything of God to you. I release the realization of all that God ever was that has already been achieved, that already resists, that already lives and results in you. I release it to you and I just release every word, no all fears. I break them, all confusion. I break them. I command there to be a supernatural weapon in this teaching and I break the spirit of lust, pornography, anger, hatred, everything that hinders you from God. I break its power and I give you the revelation and knowledge through the authority God has given me to understand the sowing seed process, the word of God to unfold before your eyes. To experience, I call upon an experiential bomb from heaven that you will experience God's presence right now. I command it to be so. I release it through this connection. There is no time, whatever space, time. When you see this, this is the anointing this is God and I just release everything of God according not what you don't ever want what I have anointing wise you want what God has for you but learning this and understanding this this is who God is so who God is I release it to you to rise up everything that is in you in Jesus name and I just bless you I want people to be blessed, so I just pray. I know the I know the power of prayer and impartation. God has shown me that it's so powerful it's not about using it's not about I like him because he uses big words he seems more educated no I'm going to try today. I have a training for a new position. All right. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I release the Holy Ghost and fire to you. Now, I got to go to the bank. I'm going to set up a bank account. I'm going to affiliate with Amazon, Bitcoin, all this stuff. And I, Because I don't ever do nothing unless God tells you to. God is really bringing me into financial prosperity. I already have the knowledge. I've been studying for about a year now how you can affiliate with companies, how you can connect, how you can use Facebook and everything, advertisement. But when you do it for God, it has to be bigger than just to make money. It has to be solely for the will of God. I've dedicated every dollar I will ever make to God and to building his kingdom, not to be rich. I'm going to use the wealth and prosperity God's given me for his kingdom and for his glory. I already made a vow. And it has to be bigger than just well, learning how to make money. Why are you learning? What is it? How, are you, how is it going to bring glory to God, if you ask yourself this question above that, then this process will be easy. So it has to be about the health of God. We sell health products. It has to be about the knowledge of God. We hand out and we issue out the greatest books that have ever been read, printed by men of God. We find them and we make sure we experience it and we sell it. We don't have to touch the items. Every time it's a click, you get paid. And every time and we use the money for the kingdom of heaven. And it's all coming through the, and it's just, it's amazing. We're living in the most prosperous times the world has seen. Okay, now I'm finna go there. And I'm setting goals and God is causing me to rise and increase and he's causing he's tripling my speed I'm able to first I was able to learn I learned how to double my speed accelerations by listening to audiobooks instead of trying to figure out looking on the computer reading I found pressure points that hindered me from growing oh when I gained something I'm like now I have to do this no when I learned I don't have to do nothing when I stopped when I stopped trying to read, which takes hours, and I started listening to audiobooks, and I started just listening, and I started learning how to meditate before I gained knowledge, I'm able to absorb and gain more knowledge 10 times more, 10 times faster, but now he's doing it to a triple speed. My God. Jesus Christ is the only way to God, the kingdom of heaven, and eternal life. It's not, you cannot go to heaven by being a good person. You cannot receive all the glory, all the riches, all the promises of God by being a good person. Only by receiving and submitting to Jesus Christ. It's the most simplest prayer in the world. Lord Jesus, I don't know who you are, but if you are who you say you are, show me. I make you my Lord and my Savior, and I repent of my sins. Boom. Boom. Get in a Bible church, get around anointed people, get find somebody who carries the power of God. But just ultimately, you don't have to worry, how am I going to do? No, just spend time with God where you're at. I don't care where you're at in life. If you just simply spend time with him, 
Not trying to find out this, figure out this, trying to figure The devil, oh, he loves to come to Christians when they're new because he knows how to rip them apart. He knows, he knows how to shred them to pieces faster than you can imagine because, and this is one of his tactics. Most people, when they first become Christians, oh, now I got to do this for God. Oh, but I'm not qualified. Oh, now I got to find a way to make money for God. Oh, blah, 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 blah. I got to do this. Blah, 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 blah. And they just, it just breaks them. It just breaks them. You ain't got to do none of that. Don't do none of that. You know what you do when you first give your life to Christ? Shut your mouth. Sit where you're at and f know God. Pray. Read his word. You don't have to do nothing. God himself will even tell you, just get to know me and I'll do it all for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let me testify. I don't care what my face looks like. The more I serve God, the more I hate myself. The more I taste God's glory and riches, the more I realize how evil my flesh is. I don't care how pretty I look, how handsome I look. I wear cologne, I'm learning to dress, and I don't care about none of that. I hate that. I'm not going to argue with anybody in the comments, flesh versus flesh. I'm not going to argue opinion versus opinion. That's the problem with religion and Christians these days. I'm going to tell you the reality of God. I'm going to get in God's presence. Instead of getting on the phone and talking about God, we're going to talk to God until something snaps in the spirit realm. We're going to worship God until we feel his glory. We're going to praise God until we feel power. And in that power, in that glory, we won't just sit in it. We will reign in it. We will shred the devil apart. We will speak with demonstration. We will show the gifts and the prophetic and the anointing and everything will increase and it will rain upon the nations and people all right but i'm in a time right now where god is really just elevating me god is also raining financial prosperity on me let's talk about money for a minute it is not the reason there are many christians who are powerful christians i don't even like using the word christians the people that worship jesus christ that serve the one true god through christ jesus who was born of a virgin mary who died on the cross that's who we serve that's the real god that's the only way to all eternity and power and anything but most people will be broke because they think money is evil Money is a form of prosperity. The love of money, which turns into greed, which you begin to hold on to, all that, which is a whole bunch of demonic spirits, multitudes after multitudes, that's evil. It is God's will to prosper you financially. It is God's will, and this is powerful too. There are There is a satanic paradigm. There is a satanic system in this world, and it's the systems this world is run by. And God wants to break you free through Christ, through those systems, and he wants to release and he wants you to operate and live in the systems of heaven while you're on earth. We, as people think we're supposed to just live miserable lives on earth, never see God, die, then we get to the glory. No, the glory is now. God did not intend you just to be miserable. He intended you to be rich, to have wealth, to have purchasing power, to buy out movies, to buy out territories for him, to build his kingdom, to increase the church. But because we don't declare and we don't have the right mind state about this because clearly anyone wants to people always want to talk about the word of God but when it comes to finances they know nothing about it there's thousands of verses there are more verses than salvation than any other subject in the Bible about money not just about money but God increasing you financially causing your barns and bats to overflow the Lord is increasing you more and more it is God's not only that, it is God's desire above all it says that in the word of God it doesn't say it's God's desire it says above all other desires. It's God's desire for you to prosper, for you to prosper, for you to prosper and be in health. Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? So I need you to understand. So, so lately I've been declaring and I've been, don't just declare, sow seeds. I made the greatest decision of my life this month. I gave, my bank account is at a negative six dollars and it is the most good. It is the greatest decision I ever made in my life because the spiritual power and the spiritual revelation and the spiritual doors that have opened up for me and for the just living in it and seeing just the spiritual eyes that have opened up and everything on the eternal revelations that have opened up inside of me because of that sacrifice. Because I, when bottom line, there is no what if, maybe. When you give God all, he has no choice but to give you his all. According to his word and his promises, when you give, it will be measured. The amount you give, you will get back. That is a promise. It cannot, God cannot lie. But the reason why we think God is a liar and we don't encounter it because doubt, it's not that God is a liar, but doubt is a barrier for that blessing. Let me give you an example. I'm a very visual person. God is nothing but a blesser, a rewarder. It's in his DNA. He doesn't even know how not to bless. 
There are certain things that God don't even know how to do. There are, see, this is, what, this is a powerful revelation too. The way we operate as humans because of the satanic rule and the order and sin, God doesn't even, he understands because he's God, but he's never been fake. He doesn't know how to be disloyal. So when we operate in that, he sees it, but he doesn't even know. He doesn't know how to be disloyal. He does not know how to be fake. He does not know how to be greedy. That has never been in God and never will. He, that has never been in him. He doesn't know how to do that. Okay, but when you go against the order of God, what happens? The opposite happens. The opposite of life is dark. The opposite of love, love is hate. But look, when you begin to decree and declare, you don't ever go to God begging. If you go to God begging, you will never receive nothing. Satan has twisted this thing called humility and humbleness. We think that when we go to God bragging, we're being humble, but we lack knowledge and we don't know who we are in Christ. You don't ever go to God begging. It is your birthright. If you've received Jesus Christ, it is your birthright. It is your God-given entitlement, your God-given right to prosper in your finances. It's not a matter of, well, maybe. No, it is in your God-given blood. It belongs to you. It's not something you even have to Certain things you will never get by just praying. Many Christians, they just go to church, pray. They live defeated, miserable lives. Not because they're stupid, not because they're dumb, because they lack knowledge. And we who have that knowledge, we will be held accountable by God for making sure that we teach the body of Christ. For us who carry this knowledge, this wisdom and understanding, it is in our duty to release it and to tell and to teach people about it. If we don't, we will be held accountable. And the more we release and give it out and share it with people, the more I'm spitting all over the camera, but I'm possessed by God. I'll be feeling, let me just testify real quick. I don't have faith in God anymore. I know God. I don't just know God. I'm becoming one with God. I experience him on a daily basis. I have a table in every room. Every area of my room is a portal to heaven. On my table, I'm learning how to do spiritual equations. When I get under the, first, I get in the spirit of God, whether it's through worship. But now, now. It's evolved. Now, I don't even know how to explain because this is new and fresh revelation. I'm just testifying. I don't come up with a sermon. I don't. I just release the Holy Ghost and I just testify and I just worship God. That's it. I don't ever answer comments on my Facebook or anything because I don't, I don't, I'm not even a fan of Facebook. I love the platform. I'm not even a fan of YouTube. And I'm, just, I'm, I'm just here to release what God has called me to release. I love Jesus so much. I can feel God. God is unfolding the gifts in me. The, 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 the gifts that are in me, they're, they're unfolding to a different dimension. And it's amazing how the first part always seems the longest. Just like I, I study a lot. The earphone, let me, let me give you a key. This will change your perspective, your mind, and the way you live everyday life. And your life will be more empowered, more rich, more knowledge. And everything of the heaven will just flow freely. Let me tell you this. The most powerful you weapon ha you have is earphones. So since that's the most powerful weapon you have, forget the $800 cell phone, forget the $5,000 laptop, forget the $15 million graphics card. The most powerful tool you have is to plug in, whether it's the God through prayer, but let me just, let me, give you, let me try to keep this simple. Your headphones. And the good thing is if headphones break, headphones are the cheapest thing, but if you didn't have them, how would you plug in? And so don't try to figure it out on your own. Listen to powerful men of God. Listen on ways to prosper financially. Go to the master, go to the es expert. Nowadays, everything, you can talk to experts for free. I go to webinars with multimillionaires. I go to webinars with powerful men of God and I'm just increasing on every, and I go to the best. I go to the expert and I listen and I subscribe to their newsletter and I go to their webinars and I just listen. And in, instead of waiting months, trying to figure it out on my own, putting all this unnecessary pressure, wasting all this time and money, I go to the experts and I listen and I do what they say. Then in so much less amount of time, I'm a little prosper. And Hallelujah. I'll be back. I ain't never gonna stop. The devil hates me. Hates everything I'm doing, and I hate him too. But what he don't understand is the more he tries to attack me, the more I'm going to reign in Christ. And bottom line, man, I just want to let y'all know I love Jesus with all my heart. All I want to do is serve God and bring people to light. It's gone deeper because I've been uncovering my gifts in this process. Then I've been learning how to use them, building things for God. I've been learning all this, but now that's like plus and plus and plus. But now it's equaled, and it's all... What you do, it's all for the souls of the people. 
So when it gets to that level, you're uncovering your gifts, unlocking your potential. And there is, there is DNA in you. Your DNA carries the information and infinite memories of God. There is so much dormant DNA. That's why you have to learn DNA activation. This is not some sake. This is of God in Christ. When you learn to activate this DNA, when you learn to activate things in you, it's going to be like me. It's like you, you feel like you've accomplished everything in the world. You have more riches than anything, the whole universe, everything you've conquered. It, it's in your hand. What do you do now? You worship God and it's amazing. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'm about to stop this button and, I'm, and I'll be back. I'll be back. If you want the weight of glory, you got to go to the gym and pick it up. Exercising brings you closer to God. Walking brings you closer to God. But ultimately and more importantly, you know how when you work out, when you do martial arts, you sweat. But we have to learn how to sweat in God, how to exercise our prayer our intercession, our spiritual faith muscles, our heart muscles, our swords, how to sharpen and exercise our swords by slicing up demons. We have to learn to give God all of our energy, all of our emotion, all of our thoughts. You have to study your mind. I don't care every neuron. You got to learn how to exercise it and use it for the synapses, the pathways to God and give all that to God. When you exercise, you got to exercise your mind, your prayer, your declarations, your memory on the word of God. Learn how to exercise every part of your body. And my God. Every time you give this to God, he takes it, he makes a masterpiece out of it, it becomes a memory, and it's stored in your heavenly gallery for eternity, and God gives you more back. Okay? You got to pick up your sword and start slicing demons. You got to exercise your authority. You got to exercise your knowledge in God. And you got to learn to find ways to increase your knowledge more rapidly. Whether you learn how to read faster. Whether you learn how to take groups of words instead of single words. And groups of knowledge and groups of revelation instead of single handed knowledge. And you got to have to, we must increase in the things of God. We must persevere. We must learn how to tap in to the gifts inside, the unfoldment inside, the power power inside, the spheres of side, the gateways of our mind into Christ Jesus inside. We must learn how to activate. Once something is activate, it will always be open. And it won't, it lies hidden though when we don't exercise. We have to exercise the gift of intersection, intercession. We have to exercise the gift of worship. We have to exercise our praise. We have to exercise our teaching. We have to exercise our teaching, the videos we're doing now, the way we type, the message we would type. We have to give all of our we got every time. Don't ever hold back all you got. A lot of people now, they hold things back so they can put it in a book. I'm going to hold this hidden nugget until I get my book that they're going to pay me for. No, when you release everything right now, everything you got, you will only get more and more and more. And your capacity will only increase faster and faster. Other people have been hindered and they've been held back because they hold the things of God back so they can make money, so they can be famous, so they can restore it and wait till the perfect time comes. Now is the perfect time. Not tomorrow. Not when you go on stage. All right. I exercise a lot in my spirit. Music is a potency. It's an enhancer. I listen to powerful music and I, I'm able to walk faster. I'm able to walk longer. I'm able to pray deeper. I'm able, I'm able to pray in a deeper emotional state, which takes me into a deeper spiritual state. And I exercise this. Then knowledge comes up and I put the headphones in and I gain just knowledge for hours. And I learn speed read. I exercise my book reading skills on the things of God. I read nothing but books that will take me to higher mountains. And I study and go to the experts, the source, which is God and the experts and generals in the army. I stay connected to them and I'm under the wings and shadows of the glory and knowledge on their life and I eat it and I eat knowledge and I eat revelation and I eat before my father's throne and I feast at the tabernacle of God. Every day, every chance I'm starving for God. After he done fed me, I want more. I said, Lord, can I get some dessert? And I'm very violent and vicious in my pursuit of God. Violence will have you on a pathway that will rip kingdoms, that will rip satanic altars that will rip limitations with ease okay your character builds on top of character on top of character and the fire pur purges you seven times and diamonds pure diamonds come out of that character and it flows on rivers to nations okay
connect the prophecy into acknowledgement, into a system of worship, into the Holy Ghost, connect it with daily life. Tap into all things. Exercise your mind in Christ. Exercise your vision in Christ. Think of all the prophecies and put them together in one book and let it unfold deeper meaning and revelation and tap into that and exercise and sit on the sails of eternity and explore with Jesus and see Jesus in your mind. Okay? So you can experience God. If you want the glory, you got to go to the gym and pick up the weight. And in the higher dimensions of the anointing, you can preach all your heart, all your soul, all your energy without getting tired. You can literally preach for five hours, six hours without getting tired. All your heart, all your soul without getting tired, without even breaking a sweat. Okay? And it only gets higher and greater. Okay? And this is not to brag. This is to bring people to Jesus Christ. I don't care what they told you. I don't care what religion told you. If you don't accept Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. If you don't get washed in the blood of the lamb, you're going to hell. Not for six months. You're going to be wishing you could do nine years in prison and worship God. But you won't get that chance again if you don't get it right now. This is what I know about God and the revelation God gives me. There will be, just like it says in his word, you are without excuse. Look at the hidden qualities of God in creation. There will be no excuse when we stand before God and we will know in our spirit. Every person that has ever not got denied at the entrance of heaven, they're not wandering in hell. Well, I should know. They know they had every opportunity to get it right. They know they had every chance, but they denied the Lord. They're going to know that they know they know. And the truth is going to be brought before them. They're going to know and they're going to spend forever wishing they could have got it right. But there will be no second chances. Okay? You have to get it right now. You have to see yourself as a superhero, like Superman and everything. You carry the key to eternity. You know about Jesus. You carry the key to everything. You have to see yourself as one of the very few people in the world that know this knowledge. And you have to go out and start spreading it on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter, in the streets, in the internet market, in the malls, whether it's on the shirt you wear. You have to spread this word. Let me give you another knowledge, another great, wonderful thing that the Lord has shown me. <sighs> there are many prophecies that haven't been fulfilled yet. They're being fulfilled. Two major ones. One, putting the enemy under the feet of Jesus Christ. Two, Jerusalem, Israel. Anytime you support, not just financially, to Jerusalem, to the Jewish people, to help bring them back to their land, all the prophecy when you study the Bible. But when you pray and you intercede for them daily and you develop a love for them, much more than giving money, you are fulfilling in time prophecy. You will be written in the book of remembrance and you will shine for eternity. I love the scripture in the Bible. It says those that are wise will shine like the firmament of heaven, but those that bring many to righteousness will shine like the stars for eternity. When you rip Satan apart, when you cast demons out, when you break satanic strongholds off people's mind by releasing knowledge, by praying for people, by intercession, you are liberating the things, you are liberating the kingdom of heaven. You are literally liberating the kingdom of heaven and bringing God's people to him and you are putting the enemies of Christ under his feet. You are fulfilling a prophecy. You are fulfilling the will of God. You are fulfilling the desires of Jesus Christ. And you will shine forever. Not, not, in, not just in heaven, but now. Okay? So pray for the Jewish people. Be a part. Visit them. Bless them. Love them. They are God's special people. And rip the kingdom of hell apart. Okay? If you do these two things... You remember there's a scripture, and this is deep stuff. We can go as deep as you want, because I go in the depths of God. I can go to the depths of the God, the depths of his treasury. Where he says, if you know this, you will not taste death. It's a certain knowledge that once you've possessed of the Holy One, that's once you've obtained, it is impossible for you to die. That means on this earth, you can't die. And I'm telling you straight a revelation from God. So that's why you tap into this knowledge through the Holy Spirit and you let the Holy Spirit be your mentor. You let the Holy Spirit be your coach. You let the Holy Spirit be your psychiatrist. You let the Holy Spirit be your mentor. And when you 
you tap into certain knowledge. You have no choice but to be preserved, protected. Satan will not be able to kill you. Death, murder, bullets will not be. You must. You know, there's certain knowledge and information that must be kept preserved in, in, in secret. That anybody that comes near it must die. But well, there's certain people who carry the knowledge of God. They, can, they must be protected. They are no longer. They are no longer. Oh, I feel God. I've been working out. If I look like I'm sweating, I've been working out in God. I've been listening to music. I've been worshiping God violently. A lot of us, we worship God and it's boring because we, we think we have to be these, we think we have to be like Hillsong. We think we have to be like the preacher. But there is a level of uniqueness inside of every human being that no other human being possesses that when you tap into it, and let me tell you how to tap into it, it's going, you're going to feel weird. Do the things that make you feel weird and awkward. Because in that weirdness and awkwardness, you will find what we call the unique DNA blueprint. And it will activate. One of mine is violence. So when I pray in violence or when I just use my mind in violence, I don't just pray with words. I learn how to use my mind to pray. I learn how to use my eyes to pray. I learn how to use the knowledge I have to pray. I learn how to use visual images to pray. Praying is so exciting now. And it's so, and I have so much victory in it. And I have so much just breakthrough in it. And it's, it's exciting. I'm just giving my all to God. And I'm just hoping, I pray that anybody that comes to this will be touched. I tell God every day, I can feel God in my brain, in my soul, in my DNA. Now, the time we have on this earth is short. It's not about going out and doing what you think is big for God and what God thinks is big is two different things. Your taste for a woman and a man and your resume and your forte of a wife or husband is the complete opposite of what God has for you. Stop choosing your own and let God choose for you. Stop being what you think is great and let God be what's great for you. Okay? This Christian walk for me has become so easy and I've accelerated in my growth spiritually. I've gained, tapped into unlimited potential. I've accelerated, I've grown, not because of mine, because I've learned a principle. And I've learned simplicity. And I've learned how to sit back and let the Holy Spirit take control. Not anymore my human effort, not my own human skills, not my own human goals, not what I think in my human mind, but I've learned how to crucify my flesh and let the Holy Spirit reign in ease. And it has given me success in my spiritual walk with God. Okay. I give God all I got, man. What else? What else is there to do? And God has a wife for me. I already know her, and I'm excited about that. But forget about me, man. I know I'm going to heaven. Not because of anything I've done. Not even because I preach. Not even because I'm anointed. Not even because I have gifts. But because I've received Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. And I've been washed in his blood. I know I'm going to heaven. And right now it feels so good because I know that in the Holy Spirit and what God is doing in my life, I'm fulfilling the works of God. See, you can invest in Bitcoin, and I'm doing that. You can invest in, in uh, businesses. You can become a billionaire. But when you invest in God, when you invest in Jesus Christ... You can teach someone how to speed read. You can give somebody knowledge. You can teach them a million-dollar multi trillionaire technique. You can give them health tips that nobody possesses, but that will all perish in the end. But when you tell someone about Jesus, when you spread the eternal word of God, you are changing people and people are being touched by eternity. And when you get to heaven, those people will see you and you will know that you have brought glory to God. Excuse me, in Jesus' name. Praise God. We didn't empty out our vessel before the Lord. We got filled with his power, filled with what was on his mind, filled with what was on his heart, and we just flowing and having a good time while we casting devils out. We just flowing and having a good time and celebrating in the shine and glory of God because victory belongs to us in Christ. 
We just expose and Satan and torment his demons with the power of the Holy Ghost and having a good time while we do it. We're bringing millions to the Lord. Eternity is being formed. The kingdom of heaven is being built. Our social skills are increasing and God is raining his divinity upon them. He's raining his divinity upon our weaknesses and he's perfecting everything within our spirits and molding us and mending us and shaping us more and more into Jesus Christ. Once he's got that arm slotted under the image of Christ, he's going to take the right arm. He's going to get every molecule, every chromosome, every form, every matter, every space, every extension of your mind. He's going to Fill it with Christ. You're going to walk around like Jesus, taking over things on this earth. Not just to suffer, not just to be humiliated. Remember, Jesus did all that for you. You die so you can enter into his glory. You submit so you can enter into his rest. You literally live in Jesus and took all the suffering and pain for you. You enter into his suffering and you die, enter into his death, but you are born into his resurrection. You are born to who he is and what he is and how he reigns in heaven and eternal glory, eternal riches because Jesus died for us. Now we get to reign from the throne room of heaven where he is seated. That's an amazing revelation. We're having a good time on this earth while we're ripping Satan apart. We're having a good time on this earth while we're writing books. We're having a good time on this earth while the wealth and the systems are coming to us, the body of Christ. We're taking over the nations and the earth to bring the glory to God and to bring the people to salvation. Okay, we're having a good time in this and it just, it's just getting greater. The celebration is getting bigger. The saints that are entering the kingdom are getting bigger. The souls that are being one for Christ are just reigning and coming through. God is using us and we're excited about that. It feels good. But as I come to a close of this chapter and to a next one, because every day is a new chapter, I just give God all the glory and praise. I give Jesus my heart and my soul. I give Jesus Christ my life and everything that I am. I dedicate every part of my being to Christ. My time on this earth will no longer be lived in pleasure. Fantasy land, it will be used to exploring and getting filled with God and getting to know God. Just like technology is advancing, but well, my understanding of God and my relationship with Christ is advancing. So I'm studying his word, I'm getting to know his word, and there's nothing like it. There's nothing on the face of this earth like it. And I'm going to use it for the people. I'm going to use this to bring people to salvation. And I'm just excited and I'm just expressing and releasing this God, this Jesus Christ, this Holy Ghost that lives inside of my being, that dwells inside of me. That teaches me how to serve Christ. That teaches me how to pray. That teaches me how to love. That teaches me how there's no condemnation in Christ. That shows me that I cannot lose. That gives me unimaginable clarity. Clarity, which is just a supernatural empowerment and just a supernatural flow of health. And I'm dedicating myself to God. I'm committing myself to be in health. And I'm learning how to be disciplined before the throne. I'm learning how to completely submit my way and my meal my, and yield my ways to God. And God is just raining on us. And I'm excited. And that's all I got. I love you. I bless you. And I release everything of God to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. In the heart of God. We live in a generation now where we've accepted homosexuality well. The government approved it and we accept it and we're okay with it. When we shouldn't accept it and we shouldn't be okay with it. We live in a time now where everything's Satan doing, we as the church, we don't even stand up and fight. We just say, we just say, oh, we'll just give it to God and we won't pray about it. We just and God's not happy. And he ain't going to be, he ain't going to be, he going to judge everybody, but he going to, he going to really judge his people. Us who hold the power to release the government of heaven unto the government of this earth. He going to really hold us accountable. And many people, many people, millions and millions and millions of people going to be real disappointed when they stand before God. Ain't nobody want to hear this now. We live in a time where everybody, they just, they got itching ears. They want to. I went to church, you know, I repent, I'm good. 
but they still living like the devil. Ain't nothing in their life change. And they're gonna be they're gonna be real disappointed when they stand before God. We're living in a time now where everybody backsliding. You know what I'm saying? They backslide. We live, but we're really living in a time now where people, all these, because God has poured out his spirit on everybody. You got 15-year-old prophets, and it's not fake. God has really raised them up as young prophets. You got people that God is God is looking for people. He's calling on everybody. And but they're using God as a way or a tool to make money. They're trying to figure out how they can make Christian t-shirts just to make money. And they're not gonna say that. They're gonna say they're really serving God, but in their intentions, remember, intentions are everything. And they're trying to figure out how to make a profit off God instead of just, be, they're trying to be like this world. We're living in a time where people are using God as a way to make money. You can't serve God and mix him in with the world. God's going to bring money in his timing, promotion in his timing. But we're living in a time where we're trying to promote ourselves. But we're living in a very wicked time. But Satan is very cunning, and he, and you know what I'm saying? We don't give no credit, but bottom line, the devil's not stupid. He's not dumb. He's not illiterate. He's not some just idiot in a cape. If he was, 70% of the world, even the body of Christ, wouldn't be deceived right now, okay? He's not stupid. He knows how to do the most evil things and have you living in the wickedest way, and you think it's okay. You have all these reasons why you're good. I'm going to heaven. That is a master technique that Satan loves. Where a person's so blinded, they're sitting there criticizing, gossip. They're doing worse stuff than devil worship in the body of Christ. They're like, oh, I'm going to heaven. I'm good. I'm living. And you got people that really think it's everything's okay and they're on the road to hell. The devil got these people deceived. But let me explain something to you. It's not God's fault. It's not the devil's fault. It's not the government's fault. It's not any angel's fault. It's not the animal's fault. It's not nature's fault. It's our fault. When you unlock and realize self-will, what God has given to mankind and each and every human being, you realize there's no one to blame and there's no excuse. You have the power in your tongue and in your self-will to choose God in heaven or Satan in hell. But we live in a time now also where we've become very lazy. We like going to church and letting, that's why we have few leaders, few generals in the army of God's kingdom now. We become very lazy. We just want to sit up under a man and a man's uh, wing of God and just let him lead. And we'll just sit back and just feel okay because he's walking in the anointing and power. This is very dangerous as well. And a lot of us do that. Okay. And God's not pleased. He's really not pleased. The church has become a harlot. You can't mix God in with holiness and pleasure and, you know what I'm saying? You can't mix God in with the world. And that's what we fail to realize. You can't be one fit in the world and one foot in God. If you're a friend of this world, you're an enemy to God. So we haven't realized that it's about dying from this world and this system and our flesh. We love our flesh. We love sex. We love porn. We love, we love drugs. We love, we don't want to let it go. We're also living in a time where we have forgotten about the Holy Spirit. Nobody knows about the Holy Spirit anymore. The Holy Spirit is everything in your walk with God. The Holy Spirit is everything in your ministry. The Holy Spirit is everything in your transformation and your in the glory of God. It's every the Holy Spirit is everything. We forgot about the Holy Spirit. The devil's knocked all that out. But Satan just walks up in the church now and just takes what he wants. We accept it. Okay. And God's not pleased with that. I'm just saying what's on the Lord's heart. We really got to get it right. It's never too late to get it right. It don't take a year to get it right. It don't take a month to get it right. It takes right now to get it right. All right? So we really got to stay in repentance and fasting and submitting to God and crying out before him. See it? A lot of mature, great men of God, they begin to fall as they rise because they dive into such a deep well of knowledge that gives God, that when the knowledge God gives, it'll blow away. It will just, and it's amazing. But they get so good at teaching and preaching, and they're supposed to, and the gifts, and they're supposed to. 
but they forget about intimacy with God. They forget their number one role as a Christian, to love God with all their heart. And so they will stand before God, and even though they brought millions to Christ, the Lord dealt about this in Revelation, one of the church is really strong. You have forgotten your first love. They've brought millions to Christ. They had more knowledge than anybody. They wrote more books than anybody. They had more influence than anybody. But because their heart strayed from God, the Lord will look at them and he will not be pleased. And you have millions of Christians. They didn't bring billions to Christ. They didn't have a church of 50 million. They weren't a, this famous evangelist television preacher. But they loved God with every fiber in their being. And when they stand before the throne, the Father is going to rejoice so strongly and he is going to overflow the entire kingdom of heaven. It's going to be like an earthquake because of the satisfaction God had of this simple soul that simply loved them with all of their heart. Your number one goal is to love God with all your heart, soul, be intimate, write poems to him, love him more than anything. And everything else will automatically go to the highest level, the highest form of success, the highest mountain of potential without you even having to try or put any effort. If you learn to love God and worship him with all your heart and all your soul, know his word, worship him, love him. You're set, buddy. You're set, homie. You're set, sister. Okay? I'm just releasing the heart of God right now. One more thing, if you're struggling with lust, pornography, I don't care what it is. Pornography and lust is one of the major principalities that is ruling over this earth. Sexual sin and desire is one of the, it's always been one of the most hardest things to conquer for a man and a woman. It's one of the biggest deities walking around. And the reason why it has so much power, because we don't talk about it no more. When you keep a sin secret, see, Satan has blinded us. We don't talk about it in church because it's a sensitive subject, sensitive subject. And because we don't talk about it, because we as men, we lust after other women, but we don't tell our wife and we don't hold ourselves accountable, it becomes 10 times worse. Because we don't talk about it, Satan has more power in this realm than ever. I've struggled with it personally. But let me tell you the key. You pray to God for a wife or a husband. And you don't pick your wife or your husband. You let him pick. Let me give you a... I ain't gonna give it right now. Holy Spirit don't want me to. Not until it's time. I'm possessed by the Holy Ghost. And you gotta get possessed. You have to get... Cons it gets to a point where God... You, you work in your gifts. But it gets to a point where it's bigger than that. God possesses you. He chooses you and he sits on the throne of your life, not in your human effort, but when you learn to submit to him and he consumes you with his knowledge. He consumes you with his fire. He consumes you with his heart. He consumes you with his word. And he sits on the throne of your life and speaks to you. But that's when he finds a vessel. And this, <laughs> this don't happen overnight. This gonna take some pain. And I mean some spiritual agony. And I mean some spiritual crucifixion. And I mean crucif... I'm talking about... I love God. I didn't come this far. I didn't go through this many wars. I didn't give up everything for Jesus to live some average Christianity life, you understand? I tell God every day before his throne, I didn't, I didn't give up my whole life for you. So I could just, oh, well, maybe Jesus, maybe I'll be broke, maybe my... I didn't give up everything for you, Lord, so I could walk around, maybe. Okay. Uh, God bless you.